So after filming that video of the toy targets that I posted recently, it got me thinking about that whole idea of trying to film while out or change locations and things like that and, and made me realize that there's a fair amount that I do that doesn't get filmed, doesn't get photographed, doesn't get documented or shared with all of you. And I thought, what if we did like a series of videos that kind of just fought along with what I'm working on at the time and shared information or relevant things with you so that you don't just see the end product. You don't just see, here's the review. You maybe see what I go through to film things, uh, to test things, or, or things like that, or uh, adventures in trying to go places in terms of nerf events, or searching for materials that I need. Just kind of the relevant behind the scenes process of everything that goes into, I suppose, uh, making videos and being in the nerf hobby and working on mods and not only the successes but the failures uh why certain things have been started but not finished kind of more of an insight into those types of things so that's kind of where i maybe want to try and, and take this uh, a new series of videos something that's not going to interfere with other videos like nerf news and uh reviews and gameplay and such when i'm able to but add to them and maybe add another layer to things. So I figure we'll give this a try for a few a few videos and see what people think and how we feel about doing it and, and what all of your opinions are. So uh, with that said, let's go do some stuff. So if you're a Patreon backer, you already know about this. Uh, but for those of you that aren't, uh, thanks to Thundercrunk, I am able to borrow his FDL2X for an extended period to test and do a review on. Now, we're not going to talk about my thoughts on this or performance or any of the review style stuff. That's coming uh, probably in about a month or so. I want to spend a prolonged period of time with this to really get my in-depth thoughts and understand and get accustomed to the platform. But uh, the reason I'm talking about this right now is I was filming a little bit of my testing and I was practicing to see uh, how much I could negate the spin-up time and how low I could get things and, and, and how responsive I could get it to feel. And I filmed a bit of a drill that I was running and I wanted to actually talk about that because I'm not going to talk about that in the FDL review video itself. So we're outside where I was filming the clip that I will put on at some point here while we're talking, but basically the point of this drill is to get yourself used to shooting on the move, which is something we do a lot in a lot of our games. Uh, you'll, you'll find yourself shooting while running a, a fair amount, but it's something you never really think to practice. Uh, and the more you do so, the more accurate you will get. So this drill is essentially running side to side from one point to the other, bringing the blaster down, pointed at the ground at each point. So when you start, you're bringing your blaster up, looking at the target to take your shot while moving, and then bringing the blaster back down. And this gives you a nice kind of back and forth, and you can actually switch hands each time so you can get used to shooting either way, which is really, really nice. Uh, something else you don't uh, hear talked about a lot when you're running drills like this as for competitive or any, any really team sport you're doing is that uh, when you're doing it while tired, that's actually good because you're forcing your body to get acclimated to going through that motion and kind of registering it to your body that even when you're tired you can still you know bring the blaster up as you're moving the the right way and put your shots on target and get those tags on players and that's to me something very worthwhile and worth investing some practice time in uh, i know it's nerf i know we do it for fun but since we are working on the competitive aspects here uh, especially for the bta stuff that we're working heavily on and, and trying to get going uh, i really really want to push good habits and 
to help players get better and better. So I think every so often we'll we'll talk about something like this, like a little fun little drill or something you can do in your backyard um, and get some, some good practice. Plus, it's exercise. Exercise is always good, as long as you're not injured. But generally, it's good. One other thing I wanted to do today is pop this open, which is a package from Singapore. I Pretty sure I know what this is and who it's from since it is from Singapore. I know I got I got the package and I was like, oh, what? Who would send me something from Singapore? And then, I, oh, I, it, it clicked. There it is. Cheers from Tungsten. This package is from Tungsten. You may know from his products. Ooh, look at the back. Okay, this is... This is more than I expected. He said he was sending me this, I believe, which I am very excited about. This is the, the Short Dart Katana Mag Adapter for the Strife. And it is, oh, he even printed it, the external piece in blue for me. That is a nice, a nice baby blue. He's even assembled it for me. This is something I talked about on the uh, our This Week in Nerf that he is using AccuFake heads as the spring for people that want to print this out on their own. Um, I am, oh, I am super stoked. And this is an ex extended pusher for both the Rapid Strike and the Strife. I am, I'm excited. Oh, I'm excited. All right. So we're gonna pop this open. I'm still very curious what the other bundle of stuff is in here. Come on, work with me, work with me. That, move all of this. Let's find out what this is. I am, is this just a second one? Oh my God, okay. I think I know why he did this. If if Tungsten has in fact been watching this channel for a long time, then this color combination is likely very familiar to you. We have a red and black rapid strike that is not on the wall, it's been hidden for a long time, and this would look fantastic in it. So, I'm pretty amped actually about this one. Tungsten, you are awesome. Uh, this is far more than I anticipated. And to have them even put together, I am super excited. I need to, uh, uh, let me grab a strife. Let's see if I can just pop this right in. Obviously it won't work with the pusher uh, we have currently installed, but to give you an idea, it should, boop, just like that. That's so easy. That's so easy. Oh my goodness. Okay, uh, let me grab a katana mag. Okay, this, this is cool. I'm pretty amped about this. It slides right in. It seems, it, it fits snugly. It doesn't seem like it's, it's gonna go anywhere. It is a little bit tight on the, on the pull out. So just rattling a few shots off with this thing, um, I was impressed. I was honestly very surprised at the groupings once I kind of got the idea of where I needed to aim to put the darts on target at 40 feet away. It was solid. I was very, very uh, surprised. We're gonna do some more testing, obviously, the other side of just doing a few you know, mags through, but uh, something I realized, I was having some issues with getting this in and I said it felt a little snug. That's because I forgot to remove the ribs on the inside of the mag well here. So I gotta do that. Um, that should fix the issue. It also was causing the follower, ooh, that was loud, uh, the follower to catch and the last five darts to not fire properly. So that should resolve that issue and make things smoother, uh, both inserting and removing the mag well. But overall, I'm... I'm kind of loving this so far. Now we've got the OFP one I need to test as well. So maybe another one of these future episodes, we will put those head to head and see how they both perform. This was more just me being excited and taking a look and wanting to put this in right away. So that is my uh, 
fun little thing that I got to do today. I'm really excited to run this at a game. One of the ribs actually just fell out because I had to force the magazine in. So that gives you an idea. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of the ribs from the inside of this magwell here to go ahead and accommodate this, which hopefully shouldn't mess up any other use for standard mags. I don't see why it would. We'll find out, I guess. Something else I forgot to mention really quick. Uh, apparently it seems I'm still having slight issues with the last dart after removing those ribs. Um, also, as you probably noticed in the quick little speed up of me installing this, I did break, oh, it's already, the glue's not holding. Um, I did break the little piece that the screw goes into for the pusher that was sent. So it looks like it, the infill may not have been super high at this point and I over tightened. I knew the second I over tightened, I just, I, it's like I wasn't thinking uh, that it was a 3D printed part. So that's a mistake on my part and potentially something that may be worth printing at a higher infill if you are printing it. I don't know what this was printed at. If it was 100%, then it's all on me. Um, but definitely something worth noting, worth paying attention to. I'm gonna continue to tinker with this and uh, in a future episode, we will return to this. I guess that's our day. That's our, our day in Nerf. Maybe that's what we'll call it. Day, a, a, day, a, a day in Nerf, Nerf life. Uh, what do you, what do you, uh, what should we call this? I, I don't even know. I don't even know. I just want to make this the best that it can be and kind of have fun sharing the day-to-day uh, -day or week-to-week -week kind of projects, things you don't get to see, like I said. But let me know your thoughts. We're going to continue this for a little while at least, see what everyone thinks of it, if we can get it to a point where we like it, and uh, we'll go from there. But remember, like I said, this is not going to affect other videos. This is just something else I wanted to add and thought it was worth trying. So with that said, I don't know how I'm going to end these yet, so...